welcome to October Gallery in its 40th year and to the exhibition Life Through Extraordinary Merrills. And a special welcome to two artists in this exhibition, Lisa Vandy. Elizabeth will uh, talk about the works and about the artist in just a second, but first I want to give a plug about something we've been working on for months, and that is October Gallery at 40. Life is reflected in extraordinary mirrors, but the title of this book is Dream No Small Dream, and it has been quite a revelation. What we wish to do with the book is to show how the October Gallery has been one of the catalysts in the art of the UK, in the history of the art of the UK. And in the book are beautiful essays, Paul Goodwin, Sir Jim Smith, um, uh, John Allen, Catherine Gray, and many artists, a lot of anecdotes, a lot of photographs of beautiful paintings, a lot of you are in this book, but you may not know it because there are scenes of this opening, for instance. And really wonderful anecdotes and stories about this gallery. And I wanted to make a special invitation for you to buy an advanced copy at the front desk for only 20 pounds. Yes. <laughs> it has truly been a life through extraordinary mirrors. And I believe that this show is really a culmination of all the work we've been doing for 40 years. Well done. So this show started small, but it became big. <laughs> um, some time ago, we thought, wouldn't it be wonderful to reflect the artists that we're showing in the Contemporary Africa Art 154 that takes place in London every October. We're planning to show four or five artists there and we thought it'd be wonderful to reflect them here in the gallery. And then the project grew and it grew so much bigger. I came across Cyrus Kabir um, through a collector friend of mine and after I'd seen his works, the word mirror for the title of the exhibition got stuck in my head. It was like an ED fix. We had to find the title that had the word mirror in it. My colleague D, who had been working on very closely on the exhibition here in Vision, came with a quote from Bertolt Brecht, who said, art is reality reflected through special mirrors. Then I tried to find that quote on the internet and I could not. But I found another Brecht quote which said, art is not a mirror held up to reality, but a hammer with which to shape it. Well, I thought that was a major quote. How can I contend with that? So we for a long time started to describe what life is. Is it history? Is it life? Is it presence? Is that what which exists now? And in the end, we came up with the title, Life Through Extraordinary Mirrors. And I hope that this exhibition gives the experience of seeing life through these mirrors. Each artist sees life through a particular mirror. Cyrus Kabiru through his glasses, Sack over through his um, remix culture, turntables, um, Alexi Peskin through his gold-plated nail figures, Nikizi's culture, Lisa Van Lee through her animated house. Everybody makes a different contribution to this exhibition. I just wanted to talk very briefly about some of the artists in the exhibition. There are seven, which is a very good number. We work with an artist called Rashid Qureshi and he always multiplies everything by seven. But in this exhibition, we just stick with the pure seven. The artist um, in this corner here is Ronald Hazame. Um, he is, of course, you know him from exhibitions here at the gallery. Um, he's a very well-renowned artist. And the work that you see with the red hat is a geisha. And I want to tell you a little bit about the story of how we found her. So he was invited to participate in Kyoto Graphie in Kyoto last year, and I traveled with him there. 
So we both got off the plane, he was from a plane from France and I from a plane from the UK. And we were immediately ushered to a scrapyard. <laughs> we, had, we had 12 or 15 hour flight and we went on yes. straight away yes. to yes. somebody who had collected a vast amount of material. Umbrellas, masks, lampshades, etc., etc. And his whole house was full of deities made out of these different pieces of objects. So immediately Romuald started collecting um, works, works, so to say, <laughs> and he catered them onto the venue where they were transformed into pieces. So this was Tetsuko, the geisha. And little did she know that she was going to become part of this yes. Life Through Extraordinary Mirrors exhibition here in London. But this is her history. And of course another wonderful artist we came across through Sagobe is Lisa Vandy. She is wonderful, has her studio in Hackney where she works with so many different tools and objects to create these hulls of boats that she collects from hull dealers they exist. Um, and animates them with fishing floats and acupuncture needles and different objects to turn them into really objects with aggressive protection. So these ones play very much part in this exhibition here. And then of course her mentor, Sack Ove, here on my... the other way around. <laughs> I'm so sorry, her mentee. <laughs> Zach, Zach Ove, here to my left. Of course, he has a very long relationship with the gallery. His father, Horace Ove, a renowned and, well, hugely respected filmmaker, had spent time and had shown his films at the gallery, and Zach had been with him, and, you know, so there's a long history yeah. all through his youth with the gallery. So, Zach, um, invited me to come and add works to this exhibition. So I visited on Friday a huge, beautiful display in MDM, which is a huge workshop, a massive workshop. I mean, you couldn't even call it a workshop. It's a, a factory, a warehouse, where you can create anything that takes your fancy. So Zach had... <laughs> been given this huge, beautiful white showroom where you could not even see the difference between the floor and the wall. In fact, you were floating upwards when you walked in. And his sculptures and pieces were gracing this room in the most extraordinary manner. You should have seen the color that they emanated and the power. And out of this scenario of people, existences, beings, we had to choose a small selection. And this is the selection you see here. You can see the remix culture, you can see the transistor resistor in the other room, which are the beautiful, almost neon col colored transistor radios, a figure here, and um, this wonderful car, which we had the pleasure of mounting on the wall, with a huge crew of people looking at you. And then, of course, another mentee of Zach's, Alexi Peskin, is partaking in this exhibition. He's not here now, but he will be here the first week of October. He made this work on a different shape background from what you normally have seen, and he made it in Pittsburgh. And it arrived just in time on Tuesday to be part of this exhibition. Um, he's currently in Angola, where he's working with another big series of works. And his work is very much about the black experience. He uses the, um, the nail that he drives into wood to talk about transcendence and pain. Um, he gold plates um, the plates, so all his um, the, the, the features stand out in relief. And of course, there's a lot of reference, as in many of the works here, to Nkisi power figures. In Lisa's work, in Cosmo White's work, in Alexei Peskin's work. Um, Eddie Kamwanda is a young artist from the Congo, and his work is in the back room. And he paints these large, almost Renaissance-like scenes of people interacting in, in, in these huge compositions. Um, these beautifully detailed painted African cloth graces their bodies that are made out of computer chips. So it is the computer chip, in a sense, has overrun 
traditional culture and has taken them away to another place, another place where they cannot find themselves. So although they're very sad and mourning paintings in a way, he presents them in such a way that you can enter them as if you entered the most beautiful world. So I salute him to this, that he is able to paint what is horror almost with extraordinary beauty. Um, another artist who I came across through two vectors, Cosmo White, um, one through um, Zach Ober's fantastic show at Somerset House, Get Up Stand Up, yeah. which, yeah. Finishes, which finishes this weekend. So everybody needs to go there and have a last look. It's one of the most beautiful Thanks exhibitions where yeah. each work is in conversation with the other work and it really gives you a fantastic experience. So in this room opposite Lisa Randis, I saw a huge red work with muscles hanging and that was the work of Cosmo White. Now at the same time Cosmo White had been introduced to us the day before by his friend Susan Fredericks, who had come by to introduce her to this young man from Jamaica, of Jamaican origin, um, to, to, to look at his work. And so we decided to take, uh, to show two of his photographs. I was particularly fascinated with this Nikizi figure. It's a performance piece where he dresses the figure in ties, and it gives the semblance of Nikizi. And um, then, of course, he, he talks about the black body, he talks about migration, he talks about identity, the, black, the male black body. So it's, it's a multi-layered uh, work that he's, he's looking at. And then to um, go back to the first sentence I said, the, the work of Cyrus Kabiru, I, I have a client and he wanted to, um, be, we went to see the Royal Academy Summer Show together, out of all things, completely different from this exhibition here. And then we found ourselves in a cafe opposite the Royal Academy and we were eating cream and scones. <laughs> and he was telling me to show the work of Silas Kabiru, who had just done a residency with him for two months. And this is how that connection came about and we started communicating. Um, so Cyrus seemed to be the perfect artist to fit into these exhibitions. He was looking through glasses onto life in reflected in extraordinary mirrors. So um, he, he's, a, he's a, young, a relatively young artist. He works in um, Nairobi. Um, he uses these objects that he makes um, and uh, that he puts in front of his face. He calls them sea stunners. They're metal objects. And he creates a series of photographs with them. So I think his work is um, a very powerful um, addition to the show. And it kind of correlates very much with the, the glass. I will, well, we were talking yesterday. It was the glass, glasses theme on this wall. The car with glasses, Cyrus Kibrium with glasses, yeah, yeah, yeah. Balls with glasses, and you know that uh, remix yeah, yeah, culture yeah. almost looking at you with glasses. Yeah. So I want to um, I want to thank Dee who will be working with me assiduously on the exhibition and also very much to the technical team. Yes. who spent an enormous amount of time trying to hoist up all these extraordinary <laughs> objects <laughs> to make this exhibition happen. Yes. So, before, before I stop, um, both artists, Lisa and Zach, have agreed to just say a few words, and I'm going to step off here now, but welcome to Zach. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you can. I'll start. I'd just firstly like to thank everybody for coming here today. Yeah. I'm thrilled to be a part of this show. I feel like I've been in this room for probably, what, four-fifths of my lifetime at 53 years of age. And it's been a room where you were given the keys, which was great, always, you know, given the keys by other great petitioners, practitioners, activists, speakers, and you always very much felt a part of a world that was right at the edge of conversations about uh, multiculturalism and how we move forward into the brilliant perspective of the future. I'm very lucky and humble in that I've now had 40 years of this experience here, which has been wonderful and in many ways it's helped form me and articulate 
in the work I'm doing today. So I'm very thankful to Elizabeth and Chile for all the work they've done here. I mean, in many respects, the October Gallery is a fruit bowl mm. for the best of what happens in the contemporary black world and also in the contemporary black conversation globally. That's been the case ever since I first came here as a child and remains so today. Um, I'm very proud to be shown amidst the works we see this evening. All of the practitioners here are genuinely brilliant in what they do and, and really uh, honest and integral in the conversations that they're having about a kind of introverted situation. You know, it's a very difficult thing to be a part of a diaspora and to continue the eternal questioning yes. that leads for honesty and yeah. equality. Yes, yeah, so and push who we are. and modernise yeah. with yeah. it. Absolutely. That's isn't it? Yeah. And as also as we procreate on all of the continents globally, <laughs> you know, who we become <laughs> next. Um, I was always very assertive in my work that there needs to be an umbilical cord that is allowed for all of the children coming up to find a way back to where yes. this begins yes. and that this and conversation we can, we can and dialogue help with that. Yeah, absolutely is, and is this place continual. has the, the, place to, the space to do that, yeah, don't forget. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so thank you day. Lisa and thank her, to all the other artists and practitioners. I, I think this is a wonderful show to be a part of. I think this of. is an amazing show. Yeah. And um, just, just in, in, in terms of all the works here, I think what's interesting to me is how all these conversations relate. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, yes, and, uh, yes. And how all these artists are related. So Maybe that helps it, yeah. might go together somehow. Yeah, I think so. But well, I think what's great is curation again <laughs> in, in finding <laughs> light voices. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, we're here. I hope you all enjoyed this <laughs> Thank you very much. Also, just to say, so many of these artists are also in the show of curating. I hope you've all been there. If you haven't, <laughs> it ends on Sunday. Yeah. Please, yeah. you know, it's, it's, Actually, it's, it's... even if you've just been there... Well, it's, it's the brother and visit. sister of this experience, so please come. I'm doing a curated tour at 9am on Friday. It's a free moment to enter the exhibition and speak with me, so I hope to see you there. And please, I hope to encourage all of you to spend money, buy the work on the wall, support the work. Yeah. Yeah.